All right, let's start talking about what is function. I'll start with kind of more broad, the idea of what it is. Let's look at it from a computer's point of view. Uh, a function takes a piece of information, does some sort of processes or operations to it to change it, add to it, whatever it's going to do, and then it spits out a new answer. That's what a function is, and mathematics is no different. Let's start with the uh, first one. If you've ever used your phone to convert uh, to a temperature conversion, like converts 25 degrees Celsius into Fahrenheit. Fahrenheit. You can see right there, my, I just used a function inside my phone to convert 25 degrees Celsius. So it started with 25 degrees Celsius put it into the function, and the function spit out the answer, which was 77 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, if I were to write the math equation that describes that, if you've taken workplace, you've seen this before, but degrees Fahrenheit equals 9 fifths times the degrees Celsius plus 32. That essentially is function inside computer program and that's all it is it takes one piece changes it does some operations and spits out a different answer let's have a quick look at a function here this is a simple function uh, describes how much you're paid at a job now naturally the more hours you work the more you get paid the number your pay depends on the number of hours you work and that's why we call that one the independent variable. The pay is a dependent variable. A couple other details. Independent variable, if you are graphing it, is always on the x-axis. The dependent variable is always on the y-axis. All right, now we talk about a couple other terms here, domain and range. Domain is really all the values you're going to find uh, all the places you're going to find this on the x-axis. So, for instance, in this case, uh, when we talk about the domain, we're talking about h. The smallest x value we're finding is 1. And h is greater than or equal to 1. And the biggest x value we're finding is 5. So, h is less than or equal to 5. That is saying is h is someplace in between 1 and 5. Same thing if I go over on the range. Now the range instead is the y values. Smallest y value I'm finding is a 12. So my y value, which in this case the variable is p, that's your pay. Your pay, your smallest pay is 12. So your pay is greater than or equal to 12. And the largest pay we get is 60. So p is less than or equal to 60. What this says is P is in between 12 and 60. Okay, right, let's talk about what makes something a function or not a function. I'm gonna go through this visually first, so it, I find it easier to see than to just give basic numbers. So I'm gonna draw two lines. There's one right there. And this one is not a whole lot different, but it is different. Now I'm going to come straight out and say, this one is a function. This one is not a function. Let's talk about why. So to start off with, I'm going to do what's called a vertical line test. I'm going to draw some vertical lines through the function. Now this one is a function because on the vertical line test, each vertical line will only touch my graph once because no place does it hit twice if I look at this graph over here I draw a vertical line there yeah it passes it only hits once there but as soon as I start drawing a vertical line here I realize I've got my vertical line hits my function three times and that makes it a fail okay. so what does that mean what that means is on this function on the left, every x value 
only as one possible y. Only one possible y value. Whereas over here, this x value has three possible y values. There's one there, and one there, and one there. That makes it not a function. Let's look at a, uh, a different type of question. Here is a list of ordered pairs, essentially uh, points on a graph. Remember, we always list them as x first and then y. And I want to know, do those ordered pairs give me a function or not? Let's, I'm going I'm to put them into a... Uh, into a chart here that makes it a little easier for you to understand. Uh, 4 and 2, that's one pair. X is 4, Y is 2. Next pair is 6 and 2. Next pair is 6 and 3. Next pair is 8 and 2. And my last pair is 9 and 3. Okay, right. now to find out this is a function, I'm going to graph it. So I'm going to put them over here on the graph. Let's start. This point right here is 4 over on the x, 2 up on the y. Put it right there. Next one is 6 over on the x, 2 up on the y. That's that point. Next one is 6 over on the x, 3 on the y. Then I've got 8 over on the x, 2 on the y. And then 9 over on the x, 3 up on the y. Yes, it's not a line, but I still have enough information based on these points to say whether I've got a function. Let's zoom in on that a little bit. Let's do a vertical line test. Pass is just fine here. Pass is just fine here and here. But right here, I've got a problem. I've got two points on the same vertical line. Which that means... I've got two possible uh, y coordinates for that one x. And if I really look at it closely, if I look in my chart, this x value is 6, can either give me a y value of 2 or a y value of 3. That means two possible y values for one possible x. That means it is not. A function. Now I would like you to get to the point where you can look right at these numbers here and say hey that X shows up twice with two different Y values and if you can do that great you don't have to go through and graph the whole thing but if you need to visualize it go ahead and graph it. Here's an example of a typical type of question you can be asked in this section. We have a function based on a table of values here with number of tickets and the cost of those tickets for student bus tickets. Now the first thing I want to do is I want to identify, before I even get into the A, B, and C, which is the independent and which is the dependent variables. The cost all depends on how many tickets you're buying. So that makes the cost, the dependent, and the number of tickets as independent. So just as a reminder, independent is going to be on your x-axis, dependent is going to be on your y-axis. And now let's actually answer the question. So A, why is this relation also a function? We go back to our previous uh, example, we look at it and say, you know what? Every x value only has one possible y. So as I look through these x values right here, I realize none of them are repeated. So no x value has more than one y value. That means that 
each x value only has one y value. Okay. So that is why it is also a function. Okay, B. Well, I already did that. I jumped ahead. Independent and dependent variables. Cost depends on how many tickets you buy. All right, last question C. What is the domain and range? Now, domain, that's your x values. Now, the smallest x value is 1. We're using the variable n. So n is greater than or equal to 1, but less than or equal to 5. 1 is my smallest, 5 is my biggest. That's my domain. Range. Not working. Range. That's my C value. I look at it. My smallest number is 1.75. I'm going to put a dollar sign in there. Uh, variable I'm using is C. So C is greater than or equal to 1.75. And my largest number is $7.62. Like a two. So C is somewhere in between $1.75 and $7.62. That's my range. 